Elisa's Almost 30 follows the story of Elisa. Just as she is on the brink of turning 30, she meets her father, a father that she never knew existed, after finding out that her father is sleeping with her roommate. Elisa is thrown into a quarter-life crisis. Joining us today to discuss the upcoming show is Catherine Guerin. Catherine stars as Elisa, and she is also the producer of the show. She grew up in Silicon Valley and attended a competitive high school. She pursued her dreams to act and to write in Los Angeles. There, she spent the next six years working in national television commercials, after which she debuted a short film entitled Amelia's Story followed by another short film called Behind Her Eyes. Thanks for joining us, Catherine. To start, how did you get into acting and writing? Well, I think I started pretty young. Um, I fell into commercial acting right when I was in college in San Francisco. I got scouted on the streets in San Francisco by some talent agents. And I think deep down, I always knew I wanted to get into the entertainment business. My dad was a drama teacher and you know, growing up, we went to so many musicals and plays, and, and I really loved how the actors would convey stories through through acting and storytelling. So I saw this as my opportunity to jump into the business, and I started working in commercials very regularly and decided, well, hey, LA is not too far. It's only five hours away. I'll give it a try, and worked in commercials and some TV and film, and then kind of got confident enough to start sharing my own um my own stories with people as la is such a collaborative market um i mean everyone here is so creative always always creating content and so i was like i'll, I'll give it a go and i found a mentor that really helped me um find my writing voice and and then i, I haven't looked back <laughs> what was the inspiration behind the show elise is almost 30. Well, I wrote it a few years ago initially after my cousin Amber visited, uh, visited me in Los Angeles. And since then, um, she tragically passed away in 2018. But I wrote it with her in mind because anyone that knew Amber knew what an absolutely vibrant, amazing, beautiful, magnetic person that she was. And we got into so many insane, crazy scenarios that could only happen with her. I was like, I have to write a show about this. Um, it was so hilarious. I was like, the world needs to see what kind of crazy we got into. So I wrote it with her in mind. And then after she passed away and after my own birth father, I'm actually adopted, contacted me around age 30, which sent me in kind of like my own little quarter life crisis. I melded the two stories together and created Elise's Almost 30. Wow, that's quite the story. So is that how you really prepared for the role? Just literally living it? Absolutely. I'm very much a writer that goes by, you know, write what you know, um, because I feel like what I go through is universally uh, what everyone goes through. Um, maybe not in the same context of being adopted, but we all face kind of life crises, whether they happen at 30, 40, 50, where we think we have life figured out, but we really don't. And life throws us a curveball to actually figure out what's supposed to be going on. Now, what has been the most challenging part about playing this character? Um, I think accessing, being vulnerable enough to share like my own personal side. Um, that was different for me. Um, really sharing exact like literally exactly what happened usually i'm a little bit more subtle in in my stories where it tells my life but in a in a way that maybe isn't exactly how it happened but no this is like literally exactly how it happened and being vulnerable enough to go hey you know i have flaws as a human being and i'm sharing that with the world um it's scary but i think it's also really it's really encouraging knowing that so many people are also going through a lot of the same thing. Now, is that your favorite part about doing this role or playing this character? What has been your favorite part? I think being really funny. I think a lot of my work thus far has been very dramatic and people, you know, people in my life know that I'm funny and bubbly and kind of, kind of cuckoo crazy. But for, I love sharing that with the screen for the first time, showing my comedic side. Um, I think that's where I really excel, and I'm really excited for the world to see that. 
For this show, you've also played the role of producer. What has it been like managing being a producer while also being the lead character on the show? Uh, it was incredibly stressful. <laughs> um, but really, really rewarding. I mean, being a producer, I actually love it um, because you have so many, you have your hands on absolutely every aspect of the process which because this project is so much of my baby, it felt like I was really giving it everything I could possibly give it. But definitely you have to be incredibly organized, incredibly diligent, and also like really love the project because you're so immersed in it for so long that if you don't love it, then you're gonna get really sick of it. <laughs> so why should your viewers watch your show? I think because else. like, I, yeah, absolutely. It's hilarious. I would say it's Bridesmaids meets Emily in Paris. I mean, it's really funny. Without giving too much away, we have a scene that involves a jade egg and we'll just leave it at that. I mean, it's so funny. It, it's laugh out loud funny. I mean, people on the set where we had to literally like tell people, can you please keep it quiet because all the crew were laughing so hard that, you know, it was like messing up our takes. Um, so, so funny, but also so relatable. I mean, the the story is so universal of, of us as human beings kind of going through life and hitting a roadblock and something, you know, coming into our life that we don't prepare for and we don't know how to handle. And whether it be friends, family, like helping us through that time, um, is something that we all go through. And it, it's something that, that's beautiful. Um, even even through tragedy, there is triumph. Well, it sounds like you really like to play relatable roles. If you could play any role, what would be your dream role? Oh man, I don't know, that's a good question. I mean, this is kind of my dream role. I mean, anything that's, that's like a girl in a romantic comedy, um, that's always been my dream. That's, that's what I love growing up watching. Um, because that's that's who I am in real life. I feel like I am I'm just like the ordinary girl next door. <laughs> well, what kind of projects do you plan on doing in the future? Because this has been a very big project for you. Yeah, we we hope to sell it and have it on some sort of streaming service in the new, near future, and you know have the the whole season play out. But I'm also working on two features. One of them is kind of a psychological horror script. Um, that I actually optioned the original short story from a Reddit No Sleep um, short story. And so if anyone's familiar with Reddit and no, the No Sleep subreddit, um, it's a very famous story called uh, The Whistlers. And I, and I transformed that into a screenplay and I'm currently shopping that and I, and I hope to be in production on that very, very soon. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Catherine. We're looking forward to your next show. Thank you so much. And thanks to our viewers at home for tuning in. This has been Julia Cosby, and you're watching Inbox with Julia Cosby on Tech TV.